are back with another episode of Did You Know with Dr. Raymond Lombard and uh, Vesel Gutsia and today we're going to have a good one. Are you ready for it? Yes, you I are. believe we want to do a follow-up where we last stopped. Well, we sort of like, it's been fun because we've sort of chronologically been following the end times. We were saying we wanted to, in season two, speak more about end times studies. So I think we've gone from... Where did we go? The rapture to the seven-year great tribulation, the second coming of Jesus. So now it leads us into the, the millennium. The millennium, the thousand-year reign. Absolutely. So we got some questions about the season two. We are probably coming to an end of season two, so we're going to have a few more episodes. But let's see how far this one, this question <laughs> takes us, because we've got the millennium, we've got the new Jerusalem. We've got the new heavens and the new earth, sure. things we want to get into. Yes, and, and the start of the millennium, who reigns in the millennium, who the goes, characteristics of the millennium. All of those things. So if you are ready for that today, I hope you are ready. I hope you are finding a comfortable seat today. Get your coffee. I've got my coffee. Get your waters. Invite your friends because, uh, yeah, this is going to be a really interesting one. Maybe you've grown up in a church or you've grown up in, in religion or maybe Christianity in a sense where you've never heard of these things, the millennium reign of Jesus. So I'm going to ask a bunch of questions about it because I'm like, is this real? Are we going to... Absolutely. Is Jesus coming back and then he's going to reign on earth or is it going to be in heaven or where yeah, are we going to yeah, find yeah, ourselves? Y- yes. You know, you know what I was thinking when you, when you were talking now, Vessel? What? Why do we talk about the thousand-year reign of Christ? Why don't we just talk about the reign of Christ and that Jesus is coming back to, to rule and reign over the earth and in the world, over the nations? Why do we talk about the thousand-year I want to know that because many people say it's, it's just a figure of speech in a sense. A thousand no. doesn't mean like it's literally a thousand. Oh. It just means, I don't know what they so, say so, it means. So I'm, I'm good. <laughs> So I okay, go, let's establish the thousand years. All right, quickly, right. Then, How long it is and, and then why? We'll talk about what it is. And right. What's going to happen there? Okay. In other words, okay. So, so what? But where we last stopped, we talk about the second coming of Christ, where Jesus appear and the Antichrist and the false prophet is cast into the lake of fire, and Armageddon has been done with, and the goat nations has been judged, and now suddenly, why do we talk about the thousand year reign of Christ? Yeah. Because Revelation chapter 20, when it ends where Christ come from heaven on his white horse and he cast the beast and the false prophet in the lake of fire. Yes. The verses following says, Then I saw what's going to happen next. And what did he saw? An angel from heaven and he's got the bottomless pit keys. Mm-hmm. Abyssos, he grabbed, he lay hold of the dragon, the serpent, the devil, and he cast him in that place for a thousand years. Okay, so Satan will be bound for a thousand years. Then, now that was, that was uh, or is Revelation 20 verse 2. Yes. But if you read verse 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, if you keep on reading, you read five times more of the word thousand years. Okay. So six times between Revelation 20 verse 1 to 7, we read of a thousand years that's coming. Here's a very interesting thing. I don't know if you know it. In the Old Testament, we have literally the scores of prophecies about the millennium reign of the Messiah and when he comes. I mean, you can think of places like Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 11, uh, Zechariah chapter 8, chapter 12, chapter 14, um, um, Ezekiel uh, chapter 39, chapter 40. And so I can continue. But never it was said, listen, ever, Uh ever by any prophet in the Old Testament that this millennium reign of the Messiah will be for a thousand years. That is a New Testament revelation. All right. Exclusively in the New Testament. Exclusively in the book of Revelation? Yes. There's no other place in your Bible from Genesis to the book of Revelation explaining to us the time frame period of this particular political, physical reign 
on a throne, the throne of David, in the city Jerusalem, in the land of Israel, for 1,000 years. Okay, so did the, the Jews always knew, uh, knew about Jesus as the victorious king that's going to come back? Because we always speak about the dichotomy between the, the servant Jesus we had that came to lay down his life, but then also the victorious is this where Jesus, you know, died as a servant, but coming back to reign? Oh, okay. Let does, me just, he, does he owe hmm. someone to reign? Or? Okay, let, let me just clarify um, the words that you used, where you just said they always believed in Jesus, that he will come. The answer is actually no. They always believed in the Messiah. Okay. Not they Jesus. didn't know that his name is Jesus. Yes. So that's why in the Old Testament, you will always read of the anointed one, the Christ. For us as New Testament believers, of course, Jesus is the Christ. All right. But for them, they're still expecting the Christ. Yeah. So let's just get that sorted out. And that out. expectation was a second coming. That is where... Of the Christ. And then a thousand year reign. That's why they... So, so here's a very interesting thing. For them, they had this idea. They didn't know about the first and second coming. Yes. It was blurred. They knew about the Messiah that comes. Yeah. So they were expecting the king to come and rule. So they weren't looking in the Old Testament for the second coming. The second coming is a New Testament doctrine. Yeah. Okay. Well, they were expecting the Messiah to return. Yes. And But of course, we know that he's going to come for his church first and then yes. return for... Yeah. Well, he actually okay. came already, died on the cross. Then he comes for the rapture, first phase of the second coming, and then for his second coming. There we go. So, so but here's something very interesting that you, that we are, the topic that we're talking about. So, Vesa, let's just establish this. If we talk, or when we talk about the thousand year reign of Christ, it is a New Testament doctrine. Yes. It was revealed to the church. The Messianic Jews today, they know about it. Mm -hmm. Only the Messianic Jews, not the Orthodox Jews. Orthodox Jews don't read the New Testament. Yes. They read only the Old Testament. So for them, they're waiting for the Messiah, yeah. for His coming. No, no, we wait for His second coming. Okay, a mystery revealed to us. Right, a a, we understand it. So now we know, and the Bible you said, because your question to me was, is it literal? Well, it says here, not only is Satan bound for a thousand years, in Abyssos, a place of torment, but it says, and I saw thrones and I saw the martyrs that did not receive the mark of the Antichrist and the name of his number, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So a thousand years is a thousand years? A thousand years is a thousand years. Okay. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself because now I'm wanting to ask why does Satan only get bound for a thousand and not two? <laughs> you know? Sure, <laughs> but, I would love to give you that answer. But I'm going to put it in here. Why is Satan? Because I think that's closer to, I want to get to the end of a thousand and yeah, ask, yeah, yeah, I yes. guess, so why is he loosened yeah. again? Yes. So, so, or will he be loosened? You're right, because your answer to the question is, What's going to happen at the end of the millennium of Satan? Yes. Because in the beginning of the millennium, he's bound. He's not on the earth. His angels is not here. So let's talk about what it gets established during the millennium. What is that beginning? What can I expect today? Like in the sense of like Armageddon has happened. Now we're going into the thousand year reign. Is there a gap or do we just go straight into? No, no, there, there is a gap because Daniel explains there must be a gap. Okay. There must be a gap between the day that Jesus Christ appears from heaven at Armageddon in the Kidron Valley and in Edom because there's three wars going on simultaneously as we see all the Old Testament scriptures. Here's the point. If that is the day of his coming and it's just one day and the Bible says in the evening it shall become light. No day, no night, but in the evening it becomes light. That's what the Bible says. Here's my question. And then what then? Because that's what you're asking. What will happen the next day, the next week, the next month? Yeah. Or six months? Because there's people left on earth. There's people in heaven. What are we all doing? So Daniel, he says in his prophecy that he, he heard from the angel. When you talk about the second part, you remember me and you talk about um, the three and a half year tribulation, the last latter part. Yes. And we said it's also called a time, times and half a time. Yes. 
which is three and a half years. years. A time is a year, times is two years and a half a time. We established that because that is 1,260 days, or it is uh, three and a half years now, or 42 months, because we get this description in the Bible in four different ways. Time, 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 times and half a time, 1,260 days, uh, 42 months. Um, so when we put all of that together, the angel says to him, from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days and not 60. Why is he adding 30 days to this figure? The extra month. And read the next verse. Blessed is he who waits and comes to 1,335 days. So there's added another 45 days plus the 30. It gives you 75 days. What the angel says is, take note of the first 75 days of what's going to happen when Messiah comes to reign. Yes. So, so in actual fact, because that's what you actually asked me, you ask me, will we just go into the millennium? And the answer is no. There's things that need to happen. What, what need to happen? From the 1,335 day in Daniel, that 75 days, what, what will happen in that time frame period? I will tell you what will happen. First of all, the goat nations is defeated. They kill okay. in that battle. Yes. So it's now the end of the day, the battle of Armageddon has taken place. Now, the Antichrist and the false prophet, as we saw last time, they cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. That's the second thing that happened. Thirdly, Satan, you mentioned it just now, is bound and cast in the bottomless pit yes. for a thousand years. That's the third thing that happened. But there's more to it. The judgment of the sheep and goat nations must be concluded because Jesus said, then I will establish my throne and I will say to the sheep nations, come, inherit the kingdom, but I will judge the goat nations. Okay. So there's a judgment. So some of the goat nation people would have survived. But the, according to the Bible, they will be killed and they will be dealt with. Okay. They will not be allowed to go into the, to the millennium. Okay. Only the sheep nations. All right. Only the sheep nations will be allowed in Matthew uh, 24 and 25. And then, of course, you remember the abomination of desolation, the, the image of the Antichrist yeah. that was placed in the temple. Yes. The temple needs to be clean. Okay. So that needs to be taken away. All right. Also, Christ needs to establish the new temple for the thousand years. Okay. There will be a temple. So you will clean out the old temple or will you build a new temple? Yeah, so because it's up to him, because we read in, in uh, there will be a new temple, how he will do it in, uh, in uh, um, Ezekiel chapter 40 to 44, actually to 46, that there will be a brand new temple built by Christ. Okay, and so that the, can take 75 days. Well, it will all happen within the 75 yeah, days. Yeah. And so you need some time to build. Yes, also the martyrs that die. Yep. During the seven years, they must be resurrected okay. and receive their crowns because they will reign now for the thousand years. We've just read it. Okay. So the martyrs, they will become alive. Those that refuse to take the mark, as we saw here in Revelation chapter 20, yes. verse 4. And also, what about the Old Testament saints? David, Abraham, yes. Isaac, Jacob, when will they rise from the dead? Okay. So now there's a resurrection at the same time when the martyrs are resurrected of the seven years, the Old Testament saints are also resurrected to receive their glorified bodies. All right, okay. Because seven years prior... So we're still in the 75 days. This all happening, happening in that 75 days because David will reign with Christ on his throne. Yeah. Abram, Isaac, and Jacob will sit in the kingdom and people will come from the east, the west, the south, and the north to sit and feast with them. Okay. So that has to take place. Also, the throne of David, Isaiah chapter 9 and Luke chapter 1 tells us the throne of David must be established in, in Jerusalem. So Jesus 
must erect his throne. He will put the throne down there. Okay. And Jesus will sit on the throne. He will sit on the throne. And the prince he speaks about will be David. Do we yes. know it's David? Yes. Did he say it's oh, David? Oh, the Bible is very clear. In Ezekiel, it actually says, Ezekiel 27, 20, uh, 37, 38, and many other places, especially uh, in 26, 27, that David will reign with Christ. Then, very important uh, vessel, the Jews never accepted Christ. Yes. They crucified him. So Zechariah chapter 12 says, for 30 days, they will mourn him. Okay. Because remember, Jesus saved one third of them by the Western Wall, by the temple when he comes, two thirds has died. Mm -hmm. But now here's my question to you. They can't just say to Jesus, well, you know, we're sorry. Yeah. And can we just go on? Yeah. There will be a 30 day and that's what Zechariah 12 tells us. For 30 days. I guess will, would that be the first 30 days they speak about? Yes. They'll straight go into mourning. Yes, of course. Because the Bible says they will see the one that they pierce his hands and his feet. Yeah. And they will fall down and say, forgive us. Forgive us. And also, the animal kingdom must be restored. Because according to Zechariah 11, the lion, the, the stomach of the lion will not eat anymore. By, by eating and, and receiving uh, animals that he will catch like antelope or buck, but he will eat grass like an ox. Okay. So the, the, the metabolism of the animal kingdom will totally change. No lion will eat a buck anymore. Yeah. There's no more carnivore. No leopard will kill a buck anymore. The Bible says in, 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 in Isaiah 11, all of them will eat grass. Oh, wow. Like a cow and a sheep. So the lion, the everyone will, they will not be, but will people still hunt? No, you won't. No, we will not kill them. Will we not? What no, will we, no. What will we eat because in a thousand years? Because Ah, we. <laughs> we. Oh, wow. Well, I know that people will catch fish. They okay. will stand by, uh, by the river uh, um, and going all the way to... Uh, uh, to the Dead Sea. So we'll all become, what's it called, pescatarian. Fish, well, fish and vegetables. Well, Is you know, I'm, I'm not going to sure. go down that because uh, I don't like that idea, but the Lord will help us sort it out. But what we do read here in Isaiah chapter 11, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat and the calf and the young lion and the failing together. And the little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall graze. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Okay. So everything will change. So in that 75 days, earth will be changed into a peaceful paradise. Will earth as we know it, exists then? Absolutely. Okay, so after all the Planet wars, Earth. all the deaths... Planet Earth is still there. Okay. Israel will take seven months to bury, to bury all the dead. Yes. So they're going into the millennium the first seven months. So we'll still have Hawaii, Mauritius, all those places, but the sheep nation... They will be all over the earth because okay. the Lord wants people to fill the earth. Yes. So what we will see is the Millennium Temple has been erected, the animal kingdom is restored, and now there's a new dispensation. For the first time now, what we see, what is very interesting, is now we have the start of the thousand-year reign of Christ. Bear in mind, do you remember that when He comes for His second coming? Yes. He also brings... Not only angels on horses, but he has to bring some of the church. Because the Bible says in Revelation 20, and we will receive crowns, will reign with him for a thousand years. Yes. So there will be millions of Christians with their resurrected bodies coming down from heaven, coming with Christ to reign for the thousand years. So you have... Old Testament saints. Yeah. You have part of the church. And you have the martyrs. 
144,000. And the 144,000 will be here with Christ. They will all be here. When will the church and everybody got, when were those who got crowns from the church? Because the only ones getting crowns is from the church era. Eh? Yes, yes. When will they come down? Somewhere in the 75 days? It's not specific. It's in the beginning. In the beginning. Yes, they will come during that 75 days. Okay. Jesus will bring them down okay. so that uh, they can rule with him. Now, although it's only the church that receive crowns, don't forget, of course, there's Old Testament saints that will also receive rewards to reign with Christ. Yes. So crowns is applicable also to Old Testament saints. Okay. Plus, crowns is applicable to the martyrs because we read they will receive crowns to reign with Christ. Okay, but let's establish that, and then we're going to end on this sure. for this episode. So, a Christian in a church era, what would he need to do to be part of, to come down on during the millennium reign, the thousand year so reign? So, me and you discussed in season one the yes. five crowns. Yes. So, if you would don't go mind, season one. exactly, and just go and look at the five New Testament crowns. We did a very, very good explanation. In depth. But, yes. but quickly just, okay, yes. so. Yeah, I'll explain. If you get a crown, you can come and reign right. with Right, yeah, yeah. So because the five crowns, to qualify for the five crowns, one of the things is you should die during the church age as a martyr, like Polycarp or yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. People die for the sake of Christ. Yeah. So they will receive crowns to reign. Yeah. Secondly, Paul says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, if you... If you, if you walk the Christian road, you fight the Christian fight according to the rules of the New Testament. Mm. You will receive the crown of glory. Yes. Also, incorruptible crown, um, pastors, church leaders, elders, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, they will receive the shepherd's crown. Yes. And those that expected Christ, they will receive the crown of glory. So there's many crowns. So the way how you lived your life on earth as a Christian if you conquer, if you live a truly holy life, totally sacrificed to Christ, you will be eligible for a crown. Because at the, at, the, at the judgment seat of Christ, the bima, that's the place when the fire comes. So in other words, your works that are worth gold, silver, and precious stones, yeah. those works, you will receive a, you crown. Will receive a crown for Okay, that. so go watch that in season one, because we did it in depth. But I just wanted to touch on that. So... If I don't get a crown, I'm still saved. Yes. I still went with Jesus to be in heaven. Am I just up in heaven then looking you're, down? You're probably going to stay in heaven for the thousand years because you're not going to come with rain. You can't come and rain for the thousand years. Yeah. So you're going to go to heaven in the, with a rapture and you're not going to see and Jesus the, for a thousand years. in that years. heaven, you're still living in a new of Jerusalem. Of course, you're in and paradise and new Jerusalem and the angels and all the wonderful things. But you're not part of what's happening on the no earth. And there's no such thing as jealousy in because we're not going to oh, no. be broken humans. No, 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 no. We're no, not no. going to be like, I'm no. jealous, I'm not reigning. No, no, no. Christ, you so. will say, God is righteous. Yeah. He's righteous. You know, this is the most wonderful thing. If you read Revelation chapter 19, you will see that when Babylon is judged, uh, how the people of the earth, how the angels and the people of the earth cry to God and say, You are righteous by judging them, giving them blood to drink. It's true, Lord. They deserve it. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So, no, we will rejoice. There's no jealousy in heaven. Yeah. We will rejoice with everyone that receives a crown, even if we don't get a crown. But the Bible says um, you will suffer loss. Okay. You will know. Because you didn't receive a crown. Exactly. Mm. It's a loss. So your, your life, if your life has not been a godly life, a true Christian committed life to Christ. Yeah. You will suffer loss. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Okay. And you cannot come down to reign with, with, with Christ in a thousand years. So. And, and even when the new heaven, new earth come after that, you will still not be able to reign for eternity. Because remember, Revelation 20 verse 4 and 5 says, there's still eternity to reign. Okay, well, let's go. We're going to get there because I think we just established 75 days. <laughs> We've got um, 925 more days to, or what is it, not days, years plus days to go. Right. So, my maths are incredible. But we're going to, I think we're going to end this episode there. Sure. And right. we're going to continue to speak. But I think we just wanted to establish the 75 days, why that's there, what everything that needs to fall into place for 
Jesus to reign and who's going to come and reign and with And also him. that it is a thousand years. And we've established it is. It is very, very important. And yeah. that is a New Testament doctrine. Yeah. So if we say Christ come to rule, we know he's going to come and rule for a thousand years because he is a king. Yeah. They crucified the king. Israel crucified the king. He's coming back, Israel, and he is going to reign. He will reign. And we that receive crowns will reign with him. Okay. So, we're going to come back to the next episode and we're going to speak about things like the, the goals of the millennium, what needs to happen in it, why Jesus is coming to do it, who is uh, he going to reign over, why does Satan get released again after that? Sure, yeah, yeah. Very interesting questions to come. <laughs> what's is there, apparently, there's another war coming. Oh, yes, oh, absolutely. Well, stay tuned. See you in the next episode. Thanks for joining in today. Um, I hope you loved it. Once again, you can go like subscribe, share, send us to friends. If you ever have a conversation about the thousand years, this is your starting point. And um, we thank Dr. Raymond for thank doing you. 40 years of study so that we can get this in um, 25 minutes. Bless your soul. <laughs> have a great day. See you at the next episode.